Hi guys, uh, Scott Woodward with you. Welcome to Friday Night Football Round 24 and we kick off with uh, a really sensational game on Friday night. The Storm versus the Dragons, one of the great games of the season and uh, will certainly tell us a lot about this competition. I always had this game slated down as a win for the Melbourne Storm but with Cooper Cronk now out injured, not quite sure whether Coach played his three best plays last week against the Gold Coast. It was always going to be an opportunity where that, an injury could happen. But anyway, he did, and he's lost Cooper Cronk for this game, and it's really brought the St George Illawarra Dragons into this game. They've uh, firmed in dramatically uh, by about um, three and a half to four points in the uh, market uh, because of the injury to Cooper Cronk. Uh, I should say the line. Look, uh, the Storm have just had a wonderful season. Uh, they've gone through State of Origin undefeated, which is uh, virtually unheard of given uh, three of their best players uh, have, have had a lot of football. They're 18 from 21. The Dragons are 12 and a half wins from 21 starts. But importantly, and uh, what's significant about this game is if you look at the history of the two teams, the Storm traditionally do not go well in Melbourne. Uh, the Storm have won their last 11 games, uh, and impressively, they've won 11, eight of those games have been on the road. So they've won eight games straight on the road, and that is just a very, very impressive effort and a marvellous effort by the coach. The Dragons have lost their last four games, and they've only won two of their last eight games. But um, uh, what's probably significant here is that the Storm have won eight of their last ten games versus the Dragons. Um, they've played 24 games, the Storm have won 17, the Dragons have won 6, and they've drawn one game. Those stats are very, very uh, big in terms of favouring the Melbourne Storm in this particular game. But they've lost their rudder, they've lost their organiser and their key talker, Cooper Cronk, and that's that's not a mean thing to happen. That's, that's a big, big thing. Uh, while he's not their best player in the team, he's arguably the hardest guy to replace. The guy um, who's been slotted in to do that is Pommy. Gareth Widdop, who's just had a wonderful season playing 5-8, a former fullback for England. And while he's only a kid, uh, he's just really stepped up this year and he's been fantastic. And the times that I've seen him play half-back, he seems to be very comfortable at it. But he's not the talker that Cooper Cronk is. He doesn't have his tactical kicking game and they definitely will lose something there. Look, I think the coach has got a few options. If things aren't working out with Gareth Widdop, um, and there is um, some injury concerns over Morris Blair, who will move from the centres to the 5-8. Um, he can always put Widdop back to 5-8, and he can bring in his captain, uh, Cameron Smith, to be first receiver. That's an option that he could do. Um, and, of course, Hinchcliffe will go in and play number nine. So... Um, it's not a bad option to have if things aren't working out. Bay Champion, which is a plus for the Melbourne Storm, he goes into right centre, uh, and he's one of the best defensive centres in the competition, and um, I, I would have always had him in my team. As good as Morris Blair is going, I would have always had Bay Champion there because he's such, just such a good defender and he runs such good lines. Uh, for the Melbourne Storm also, uh, Sissa Wonga comes in this week. Oh, we've talked about Bay Champion. Uh, Morris Blair is down at six. Uh, he ha has an injury concern. I'm assuming he will play. Gareth Widdop uh, will be the new number seven. Um, on the bench is Troy Thompson and Jamin Lay for the Melbourne Storm. Now, they're very much journeymen. So it's not what you call a crash-hot bench here for the Melbourne Storm. Uh, Rory Cost Jason uh, doesn't particularly excite me. He's also an option to come in at six if things weren't, aren't working well. And obviously, Ryan Hinchcliffe can play anywhere. He can play 5-8 lock. He can play hooker. Uh, terrific guy to have on the bench. Absolutely ideal. So, look, the Storm are in good shape, but they have lost their rudder and their key organiser and talker. Um, I think that is a massive... Massive, massive loss. The Dragons, um, they get back uh, Mark Gasney. He comes in. Look, I, I, as good as Mark Gasney is, I don't know if that is a plus for them because they're probably going to lose Cole Stanley, uh, who was arguably their best player last week uh, and an outstanding young prospect, and they may not be able to fit him in in this team. This team for the Dragons is very, very similar to the grand final winning team. Identical back line, uh, but the main thing is here, a lot of their key players are way, way down on form, and I'll talk about that in a second. Um, let's name the guys down on form. Darius Boyd um, hasn't, been, hasn't been nowhere near as effective as what he was at this time last year. Uh, since he signed with Newcastle, he seems to have gone backwards. Uh, Jamie Soward clearly playing with an injury. 
Um, but he's there. He's still got his wonderful kicking game. He does need to step up. But it's the forwards. Dan Hart, uh, Nathan Thien, Mike, Michael Wayman, Bay Scott, Ben Cryer, uh, particularly Matt Pryor, uh, Dean Young. Uh, they're nowhere near in the form like they were last year. And it, it's, it's, look, yeah, look, the coach is leaving, but They've just had an enormous amount of football. These guys played, in, um, probably three quarters of this team played in representative football after the grand final last year. Um, the coach played them in two charity um, games. Uh, there was the Indigenous game. And then he took them to England to play in the World Club Championship. I'm not quite sure why he played them in the two charity games. One of them, one of them was the Charity Shield, which was very full on. Um, it's just games that they didn't need, really. Um, I guess he wanted to fit them for England, but it's starting to have an impact now. Um, now, we've had a test match through the year. We've had um, three State of Origin games through the year. And I thought that um, the problems that the Dragons are having right at the moment, they would have had at the start of the year, and I thought they would have come good after the Origin. But um, I'm not surprised with what's happened to them. The only surprise to me is that it's taken so long to happen. I thought it would have happened much early in the year. Um, if you subscribe to my ratings membership, you'll know that I've been bagging the Dragons all year, saying that they've been under the odds and they shouldn't be as short as they are in the betting. Um, and I still, still subscribe to that. Right at the moment, I have them finishing sixth, um, and they're no more than finish sixth at the moment. So we look at the history, we look at the stats, we look at the form, and everything points to the Melbourne Storm winning this game. There's one thing here. Um, your gut feel. Your gut feel tells you that the St George Dragons are going to step up here. They need to win this game much more than the Melbourne Storm do. The Melbourne Storm are safely in the top two and they should get uh, a free week if they can win week one of the semi-finals a, a week rested. And that was something that uh, the Dragons were counting very, very heavily on. They're not going to get that and they look like they're going to have to have their first game away um, probably in Brisbane, um, against Brisbane in their very first week. So it's going to be very, very hard for them. Look, I have no doubt that this will be a low-scoring game. I, I think I think it'll be close. Um, I think it'll be very defensive, and I don't think there'll be a lot of points scored. So uh, maybe that's the way to go, take the unders in, in, in the score. Um, I certainly think it'll be under 40 points scored in this game. Um, I, I have rated Melbourne Storm um, favourites to win this game, and I think they're entitled to. Um, I still don't think Melbourne Storm are as good as what everybody is saying they are um, because they're going to finish first or second in this competition. Uh, they certainly have to be the team to beat. They're in great form. They've got a great record and an incredible coach. Uh, I still have big concerns about their bench and some of the players in their forward pack. Uh, so I don't think it's all cut and dried with the Melbourne Storm. And I think the uh, Dragons can find some form and really take it to them in this game. I'm not sitting on the fence here, but I can't have a bet. I think the prices are pretty right in this game, um, and I can't wait to see the game. I think it'll tell us a lot about the competition. Uh, I will say though, if the Storm don't go, uh, sorry, if uh, the Dragons don't go close in this game, they are absolutely gone for the season, regardless of where they finish. They have to step up and win this game. This is a semi-final type game for them. The other great game we have on Friday night is uh, the South Sydney Rabbitohs, um, who are just in marvellous form uh, against the Cowboys, uh, who have uh, struggled um, in the last couple of weeks. They got their best player and champion back last week, um, Jonathan Thurston, and uh, he was nowhere near right. He came back, uh, said he wanted to play. He was all bandaged up, and uh, he was just nowhere near right. He missed something like nine tackles in the game. Uh, they just kept running at him. Uh, he didn't have the zip that he normally has, but he did have the organisation um, and he was able to talk and they had a lot better structure with him back in the side. I think with that run under his belt, um, and this is a very, very important win for uh, the Cowboys, they have to win this to um, give themselves a good chance of getting in the four and getting a home semi-final um, in North Queensland. They've won 13 from 24 this year. The Rabbitohs have won 10 from 21, but the Rabbitohs um, are, are in great form. They're throwing the ball around and they're having a lot of fun. Now while that's good and it can score a lot of tries, it also lets a lot of tries in. Um, their three um, high profile players uh, Sutton, Sando and Luke they missed a total of 16 tackles last week. If they do that against this Cowboy team, they'll be getting beat in this game. Don't worry about that. Um, and look, I like a couple of the subtle changes that have been made in the Cowboys this week. Um, 
Aaron Payne will come back in um, and he'll give the team a lot of direction um, when they start there. He's a very good organiser and a good talker. He takes a lot of pressure off Jonathan Thurston and I think it's good to have him back into the side. Um, we have a little question mark about the outstanding young hooker, uh, James Seguiaro. He injured himself last week, which was one of the reasons why uh, the Cowboys got beat. Uh, I'm assuming he's going to be OK to play. They really do need the thrust that he provides off the bench. Um, they have named... Um, yeah, the very promising Joel uh, Reth Mueller, who's signed this week long term for the Cowboys. He's been named 19 men. I'm not quite sure what they'll do with their bench. I'm assuming they'll go with Sims, um, both Sims brothers, and Corey Patterson. I don't, uh, I don't know uh, who will be the guy who'll drop off the bench there. But it is a fantastic bench. It's a better bench than what the Rabbitohs have got. Um, and I expect the Cowboys to win this game um, simply because they have to win this game. Um, they've put in a couple of uh, below par performances, um, and um, while the Rabbitohs have been fantastic and they're great to see, um, they have got an injury concern over Greg Inglis. Um, I don't know what they're going to do with him. Uh, I, I'm, I'm assuming he'll play injured uh, like he did last week, so we don't know if he'll get through uh, the 80 minutes like he didn't. He didn't play in the second half last week. Head-to-head at the ANZ Stadium, these two teams, they've had four games. South Sydney have won three, and the North Queensland Cowboys have won one. But um, this is an outstanding Queensland side, despite the fact that they got beat last week. Um, if we get Jonathan Thurston back to his best form, and uh, uh, we know that uh, Bowen uh, will go well. He's, he's gone well every week. Uh, this year, sensational year that Bowen has had. Um, and we're going to get some guys coming off the bench um, for the Cowboys uh, like Tarek Sims. I haven't seen the best of Tarek Sims now for about a month and he's due to cut loose and I'm looking forward to seeing him and um, combining with Matthew Scott. I think the Cowboys can win this game and I think, jo- I think um, Jonathan Thurston will show why he is the best player in the world and why he is the likely Daly M winner in this game. So for me, um, I think the Cowboys represent good value, and I think they'll be winning this game. Look, there it is, two incredible, fantastic Friday night games for us. We'll have the other games for you probably on Friday. Um, there's some judiciary happening um, tonight, and we need to get some Thursday injuries, and we'll get back to you with those other games. But have a great Friday night footy. Talk to you soon. Cheers.